Okay. This is the Parks and Recreation and Harbor Management Commission meeting for Thursday, September 24, 2020. And I'll turn the meeting over to our chair, Dan Silbo. Everybody, um, start off the meeting with uh, public comments. I don't see anybody from the public uh, here. So uh, we can skip to the minutes of August 27th. Any changes, corrections, or additions to these minutes? Move to approve. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, looking for the monthly report here. Next is the monthly report. I've got it here somewhere. All right. Let's see here. So you finished the community center uh, entrance? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you'll have to drive by and check it out. Okay. We have a few little things still to do. The, um, we're, we're moving the flagpole. So we took it out of where it is and it's gonna move to the uh, brick, to behind the brick that identifies the 9-11 Memorial Sports Center. No, so it's not in front anymore? It's not going to be in front? Yeah, we, we okay. moved it to the, if you're looking at the building, to the left. All right. And there's just, uh, we just, we have some bollards in front of the canopy that just have to be finished. Kathy, was that all town, town funded, that project? Yeah, it was a capital improvement project. Um, and the maintenance guys were able to do it. We didn't have to hire somebody. Oh. And um, we also had some engineering, uh, some drainage work done through our engineering department. And um, they also fixed some, um, they replaced some concrete slabs. So the entrance really looks neat now. And yeah, that flagpole was there since I went to the school. Yeah. That whole, that little alcove thing, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was actually be, that that all that brickwork was finally because there was the little brick wall all around the yeah. flagpole. Mm -hmm. Mary could attest to this. It was really starting to crumble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see on the uh, monthly report on the upcoming events. There's some type of uh, carp tournament in the Connecticut River. Yeah, there's a there's a tournament that they work with the state. It's not run by the state, but they have to get permission through the state. And it's done up and down the Connecticut River. And they actually identify certain sites where people can, they actually pull your name out to figure out what site you're going to get. So it's yeah. pretty competitive as to who gets the best site. And apparently ours in the Cove have like been second and third place winners. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. That's great. They Kathy, camp out. I understand. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, they camp out in everything. They kind of come all self-contained for the weekend. Huh. And they fish at crazy hours. Kathy, uh, what is the GoFundMe uh, uh, for the Nature Center? <clears throat> The Nature set up, set up um, on the internet a GoFundMe page to help um, fund all the animal care. Oh, gotcha. Because we um, <clears throat> normally, the Nature Center brings in all their, a lot of their revenue during the summer and without the summer camp, we're down on revenue. Yeah. So staff are trying to be creative at ways people can, um, can help out and donate funds and we can get money because the animals take a lot of money. Yeah. They just want to eat. I don't know. <laughs> well, two thirds full. I mean, is that what was expected or they, they're doing good? <clears throat> they had a modest goal of $1,000. Mm -hmm. So they're pretty close to that. Good. Mm -hmm. Kathy, on the, my understanding this year, the um, source to the sea cleanup is going to go on for a whole month. I, Thought I saw something in maybe the river, in the river east or one of those pages papers. I assume that MDC still helps sponsor that to do some work at the Cove. 
MDC isn't involved this year, but the um, Great Meadows Trust and the Connecticut River Conserv Conservancy are still doing it. And um, yeah, they, they are recommending that people go down on their own for different weekends and clean up, but they are concentrating this coming weekend. They put a big dumpster down there and they're looking to get a few work crews to work kind of social distancing in a couple of different areas down there. Thank you. Um, I still see people fishing off the dock. Yeah. Is there any other, I know there's signage on the side of the dock. Is there anything we can actually paint on the dock that says, you know, fishing or something? Then they really don't pay attention to the signs. I know we do when staff are there, we always tell them to get off and stuff. Mm -hmm. They just get back on when nobody's there. Yeah. But we, yeah. can, we can look at other things to do. Our hope in the future is to also um, eventually purchase some more docks and put them over where the police dock used to be. Yeah. So maybe if we get that, that will help. Mm -hmm. But we're open to suggestions because we put the signs right on the dock. I know it. I, I know mean, it. And you can't take them off this time, so. Yeah. All right. The other thing is, how's the, I see there's a grab and go for the seniors. How is that going? That's going very well. That's at the community center and uh, the community renewal team, CRT, delivers the meals uh, Monday and they're for the whole week. So they deliver meals for the whole week. And then Monday, maybe between 11 and 1 or 12 and 1, the seniors drive up and pick up the meals. Staff actually bring them out and put them right in the car. Oh, that's good. Because we can't do the, um, the in-house in lunch program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my daughter, um, my daughter's going to Fairfield University, and they have the same thing at their cafeteria. They can't really, they have to go and grab the lunches but the lunches are awful. She's complaining about them every day uh, and they're limited. So you went from a place that was actually pretty good, the food was pretty good, and now it's not too good at all. They're just... Oh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah I'm sure that's a calf where they could almost pick and eat anything at the time. Yeah. yeah, it was. Now it's not. <laughs> Dan and Kathy, I'm not sure if this is the appropriate place to ask, but Last month, we talked about use of the high school pool for swimming lessons. I didn't know if there was any update on that or you want to talk about it later. It's, I can talk about it now or later. Sure, it's go, up, sure go ahead. Um, actually, we, um, what we're doing is we're, we don't have permission to use it yet, but, but we got permission to start planning to use it. So we're making, we're making contacts with staff and and seeing how many staff are available because that's going to help determine what it is we're going to do. Um, as we're planning, we're looking at prioritizing the swim lessons, the Barracuda swim team, which I'll come back to, and then rec swim. What's happened is the high school girls swim team for their practices, they have to space out a little more. So they have the pool from after school till about six o'clock. So that, that's a long time to begin with on weekdays. And so we've, um, we've made contacts with the maintenance staff because once the school, the high school team leaves and if we're allowed to go in, it's a 45 minute cleaning before we can go in because they have to do a lot of stuff, both the pool and the locker rooms. So, um, so we're working through all that to see, well then how much time is left and with our Barracuda swim team this year, all the teams aren't sure they're in the same boat we are with the schools and the pool. And so th there probably won't be swim meets, but we're looking to do something where we're doing some, there won't be, uh, let me back up. There won't be visiting swim meet. The, vi the visiting team won't come. They will do it taking times and they'll match up times and they'll do it that way. So you'll actually swim the meat in your own pool. And then the times will determine who came in first and second. And um, so we're looking at, do we have time to do the swim team for us, the Barracudas during the week and uh, the lessons on 
Saturday and maybe rec swim Saturday afternoon or something like that. So we're working through all that. Just had a meeting today with our emergency operations team and that meeting also includes the school superintendent, which is great because then I get to ask him all my questions. So I asked him what was he thinking about the pool because you know, two meetings ago, he gave me permission to go ahead and plan. You know, I didn't want to plan if it was going to be a no. So right now they're looking at, they're looking at, so far the numbers are good with, with the kids going to school in Weathersfield. There's not too many, uh, if very few cases. And so they're looking at, at gradually maybe increasing when the kids go to school, maybe more days. So he's not ready yet because I said the end of October, middle of October, November, what do you think? He wasn't ready to give me a date yet. But, um, but what we agreed on doing is what we did for the summer operation, which was put our plan together, meet with all the people we have to meet with, run it by the health district. If they're good with our plan, the maintenance and cleaning people are good, and then we'll bring it back to the superintendent and see where we go from there. So it's a long-winded answer. I'm sorry, Mike. That's kind of where we are. No, no, no. I, that's, that's fine. I understand. Thank you. What are they doing in Glastonbury? I don't know. Oh, I was just curious if that had happened. I, yet. No, I can, I can find out. I'll let you know. Yeah, no, we've heard everybody's in the same boat. The schools aren't ready to release the pools yet. Okay. All right, um, letters and announcements. The uh, fall program guide came out, right? Yep. And as I said, this year we did not print it. Um, it's online because we are changing it as we go along, just because things change, whether mm -hmm. or not we get enough people to register, whether or not the instructor changes their mind and says, I'll do in person. No, I think I want to do all virtual now. So. We're kind of making those changes on the fly. And I have to admit, one of our custodians at the community center, I can't believe this escaped all of us, but he came up with a really good idea. And he told staff and suggested, why don't we put an ad in the rear reminder saying the brochure is online. So, um, so we're mm -hmm. following up on that now. And we may just periodically put, um, ads in the rear reminder just saying, hey, you know, this program has now come because we're seeing this as an opportunity as we go along to add things, see what works, try some new things. So that's all happening. Very good. All right. Um, old business. Do we have anything? I didn't have anything. I don't know if members have anything. Anybody? No. I I guess the only question I have, and is there any update or any other additional uh, happenings on the boat launch, the angle of the boat launch, if you will? Because I'm not, I know we've had a lot of discussions and I, I'll i admit, I'm not too sure how it was, how it was ever left. <clears throat> I know there was some research being done and stuff and I don't know if it's a dead issue and we just move on. It's pretty much a dead issue. The, the engineering firm came back and said that was what was approved by the state. That's what was designed. You can't really change it because those are huge concrete things without going back through the whole process again and getting more money to fix it. And when the water in the spring, when the water was higher, it worked fine. It's when it's the water is much lower in the summer and people are are more into the water than they are on the ramp. Okay. Um, anything on the um, that million dollar is it a grant that we got or was it a bond? What, what was that? For Spring, for Spring Street? For Spring Street, yeah. Uh, nothing yet. Um, it's It has to go through the whole state process and they have to send paperwork to the town. Okay. And so none of that has happened yet. Yeah, all right. Okay. Um, new business. What do we have going, Kathy? Well, I wanted to give you an update on um, the programs that we have running that are currently going on. 
So basically what we did is we took the community center because right now we can't get in, schools aren't available. And we we're putting programs in the community center and doing programs uh, both virtual and in person. So a good example of the in person is uh, the gymnasium at the community center is the place for our fitness programs and we're able to do in person because we can space it out and be 12 feet apart that's required. And um, at the same time, the instructor is doing it remotely. So people can either sign up one way or the other. And that's, uh, that's getting people. So some classes are doing well and some classes um, just are not filling and we're canceling a couple. And we're making kind of changes on the fly, but, but those things are moving along. We talked with the school department about doing the after school therapeutic recreation program. And the school said if we could make it happen, it would be good for the kids to get that also. And they would still provide the transportation to bring them to the community center. So we're doing that in a bigger room again, so the students can space out. So that's ongoing and there's registration and that'll start next week. We're actually, I just had the, oh, I, I just had the, our new therapeutic rec supervisor, Jalene, he, um, He's actually, we have a total athletes cap, uh, program for the, the therapeutic rec kids. And some of them are gonna be doing it at the community center. And again, it's gonna be virtual. So parents have a choice of how they wanna go. So this is seeming to work and people seem to like it. So that's going on. Our tennis lessons are at the Newington Tennis Center. Our gymnastics are at the gymnastics gym in um, Newington. Um, what else am I missing? We've got the nature center is going to do their nature preschool and, um, that's going to be on site and, um, they're pretty much planning to be outdoors till the weather gets, um, that isn't conducive. And then they'll come in and pretty much be in the big room so they can spread out. And interesting enough with the nature center, we're pretty fortunate that every time we open a building, we want to make sure we have all the cleaning protocols in place. <laughs> so we have a great maintenance uh, custodial supervisor for the school system who's always willing to help us out. And he spent an hour with our staff over at the nature center, making sure we had all the right cleaning products, how to clean, how to spray, how long. And he even said we could spray around the animals. <laughs> That, as long as we don't spray on the animal. <laughs> so that worked out well. And one of our questions was some of the nature center has carpet in it. And we didn't know how that worked. And they actually said with the product that we use, you can spray on the carpet and then use a, sh a, a rug shampooer every once in a while to clean. So a lot of things are happening that we never had to get into before. And staff have been great about making sure that we make, we're doing all the protocols. An interesting thing, we, were, uh, we had set up to do our preschool in, in the building and again, had everything set up. Only one person signed up for it. And I get that with the preschool kids. And so what staff are doing now in partnership with the school district uh, and the um, Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative, we're putting together a virtual preschool program that will start up later in the year where over the summer, the school did, um, did both a preschool program virtually, uh, a quote unquote summer school virtually. They learned a lot of things. They're sharing all that with us. We're, we're sharing a lot of information. They've met with our, our um, instructors for the program. They're now putting together all the different things. And we're trying to figure, we're working we're working on figuring out a way to make that, an, I'm gonna use the word a, a less costly program for sure. And it would be about 20 minutes a day because a preschooler sitting at a screen isn't gonna sit there that long and maybe do it for three days of the week and um, do it for six weeks. So we're not doing it for an extended period of time. We're kind of doing it as a pilot program and we got a lot of positive feedback from the, from the school district about their summer preschool program. So we're taking advantage of all of that. 
and we're looking to do something with a, a relatively low cost and also offer scholarships because what we're hearing is there, a lot of people aren't taking the advantage of preschool for a lot of different reasons. So we're really, I have to give staff a lot of credit. They're being creative across the board to try to find ways to meet needs. And all of that is going on. And I don't know, Mary, if I, I probably missed something, but that's kind of a snapshot and people are signing up. And um, our senior center coordinator, even though it's social and youth services, they're running all the senior classes virtually. And those are being signed up for too. So, um, so we're having stuff go on in the building and virtually and a little bit outside and at other outside venues that we can take advantage of. Okay. Um, so a, doesn't look like it, but there's a lot going on. Yeah. Um, let's see, uh, field use, how's the, I know soccer started up again. How's everything going? Youth soccer has started. Um, as far as we know, they're doing good. They're on the grass fields. Um, field hockey has started. Um, they're on grass fields right now. Um, hockey and Little League is still playing. Um, they're still playing a fall season. And men's softball, right? And men's softball. <laughs> oh, Tom, I saw Tom wave. <laughs> I thought you were waving to somebody. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I'm on the uh, yeah IL, but uh, yeah, the teams are playing last uh, next week is their last uh, games for the regular season, then playoffs, and because we got plenty of time, there's we're not cramming the games in, which is nice. I, we had very little rain uh, rain outs this this year, so uh, that worked out pretty good. And but how it is it working out from you, Tom? How has it been going? Uh, I, well, other than, as, as you know, there was some miscommunication by an outsider. Um, everything's been going great. You know, you, you have your typical, you know, 40, 50, 60 year old little boys that have issues that have to be scolded. But other than that, um, it's been going well. Yeah, we had 15 teams. We last year we had 21. So couple, I think four of the teams consolidated to make two teams and um, it, it's worked out well. Yeah, everybody's happy that we were able to play ball this year. There's a lot of towns that did not that that decided not to play with all the restrictions and all, but I think it was a, a successful year. And the board members may remember that we gave each sports league a whole uh, a letter and a, a fact sheet of all the things they had to do because of COVID. They all signed off on it. They've all, to my knowledge, been pretty vigilant about. Um, trying to make sure we're following the guidelines, cleaning the social distancing, and haven't heard too much that there have been issues. Very good. And I just want to talk a little bit about the high school sports, Dan. Okay. Only because of the use of Catone, more so the high school, uh, with the exception of football, and that's just, that's just a, it's kind of a football up in the air all the time. Every day it changes, so I don't know. I heard it changed again today, so we have to wait and see what's going to go on. But um, with the use of Catone Field, the um, <coughs> athletic director is looking to put, um, obviously, all their games on the field. So we're working with maintenance to make sure that we also have to clean fields. There are bad, excuse me, clean the bathrooms there, clean some touch points. We got the good news that we didn't have to clean the bleachers after every use. And um, so that's all getting in place now and we'll be moving forward. And we got permission um, to do a couple of Sundays that we've done in the past. We used to do it for our football and field hockey. So right now, field hockey, we got permission to use it for Sundays. Uh, soccer has asked, we're gonna look at that. And we just have to figure out again, the cleaning protocol in between these sports. So that's all in the works. And the high school will start October 1st with their games. Uh, yeah, I know uh, Xavier, the soccer team is playing 12 games, six home, six away. Okay. And I don't even know if there's playoffs or anything else this year. I, I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, I haven't heard any of that yet. Yeah. What's All the, right. what's the um, status of the fields and the resting of the fields? And I mean, what, what, what have, what, 
what's been done in terms of physical services? Like, have they been able to take advantage of the break and kind of no sports being played to do anything to the fields, reseed them or thatch them or aerate or whatever? How's that, how's that going? Yeah, particularly in the spring, the late spring, they, they were doing a lot of work on them and it was nice back then because it was still cool and the grass looked really green and the fields looked really good. Um, and then the summer, they just, did, uh, they rested basically um, outside of the ball, the baseball field and the softball fields, uh, the fields rested. And then prior in August, they did a lot of work with um, the reseeding. I'm, I'm gonna forget all this stuff. They do, they do the uh, soil test to see if they need to add lime. They fertilize, they seed and um, they get it ready for the fall. So if they, the big part, Colleen, I'll be honest, was the rest, that the fields really rested in the spring and they, they looked gorgeous in like June. And then they kind of dried out without the lack of rain. But if you were to go to the lighted Little League field, the grass is like really green. So mm -hmm. does, that, does that answer your question? Yeah, so the fields that the leagues weren't planning to use, do they just, just do they not get tended to? Because there was, like, Millwoods 3 had, like, grass growing in the infield. Um, Millwoods 5 is total of mess. I mean, it's not, it hasn't been, uh, there's grass growing in the, in the infield there, too. And I, I guess I'm just a little bit surprised that they're not, maintained for anyone to come and use. Um, that I was really surprised by the grass growing and was just wondering if that was for any purpose or was that just not getting taken care of? Um, it really was, they took care of the fields that were on the schedule that people were using and they basically just let the other fields rest. And when we come back to it in the spring, um, they'll, they'll go back in and do, do all the work that'll be necessary to get them ready again. Uh, but we did not have, we didn't have requests, anybody, any, um, any, re well, we didn't get a lot of requests for softball fields um, this year. We did, we obviously had men's softball, but there wasn't, there wasn't any of the tournaments that normally would happen that would use all those fields. So none of that happened. So when that happens like that, they won't they won't maintain those fields, but they should. But the ones that were being used should have would have been maintained. And I know you brought up the you got my email about the um, the pile of dirt. I don't know if you want to tell the board members. Um, so over the weekend there was like a group of um, I think it was like a two Dominican softball teams came to Millwoods 3, they couldn't find a softball field that wasn't being used, so they went to Millwoods 3, but there was a huge pile of dirt in the infield, um, so they spread it. They, <laughs> like all the guys, just grabbed boxes and buckets and, um, and spread it all out so that they could use the field. Um, and so I had mentioned it to Kathy saying, you know, oh, geez, that's pretty embarrassing. But I guess they didn't have permission to use the field. They just kind of were coming to, to play on it, which I think is totally allowed. Yeah, we um, wouldn't. Well, actually, there's not supposed to be any ball play unless you're part of a league or you're uh, renting the field. It's right on the Millwoods rules. So there were a couple teams that were coming in on the weekend and maybe not being so respectful of the fields. And um, I don't know if they were confronted. I, I confronted them earlier in the summer, but by right, you're not allowed to use the softball fields unless, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Kathy, but it basically says the fields are strictly for league play or if you uh, have rented the field from the town. I mean, people are not supposed to just appear on the ball fields to play. It shouldn't be organized leagues that show up. That sounds like what you had had, Colleen, that it, it was um, that it, somebody that had their own league and just came here and played. Because we do try to catch the other people and, tr and charge them money if they want to use the fields and they're available. But the, the end story of what Colleen said about the pile of dirt, 
the pile of dirt was placed there to be used to repair some of the other fields in the park. So now all they spread all this dirt out <laughs> instead of having the pile of dirt to use. So when I told uh, maintenance that Monday morning, they were not happy. Because <laughs> 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 they paid for all that. Now they got to go hopefully rake it up because they were using that with some of the fall ball fields. Just there were holes and things that needed to be adjusted and stuff like that. So that's why we do try and get, because like right next to three was four. They could have gone to four. Well, four was grassy. It's grassy in the infield and four. Okay. But still flat. Yeah. <laughs> it is and, flat. <laughs> and sometimes, uh, we, <clears throat> like at Webb Baseball Field, we'll put a pile of dirt on it at second base so people don't use the field in the fall because it's for the football. And we don't want the two to co uh, collide because then we're not doing our due diligence. So that to, that to me, a pile of dirt is you don't play on the field. I, I never had heard anybody spread it out. Because if you come without any tools or anything, that takes a little time. I Anyways, was impressed. I that was a, they were innovative. That, yeah, that's the stories we get sometimes. Um, I saw in the C to something cleanup that there are something having to do with getting rid of some trees um, that for a runway 99 um, at the Cove. Can you talk a little bit about that and um, when that's scheduled to be and what the story is? I thought that there was some sort of group that was able to curb the um, removal of the trees. Uh, I, maybe it was two years ago. And is are these the same trees? Is this what what happened with that? I thought we were not removing trees. I haven't been up in, involved in it recently, but when it did start up, uh, Brainerd Airport had requested permission to cut trees because of run rate. They were saying, um, visit the trees got taller and, and, and so for the pilots flying in, it was becoming a safety issue or, or words to that effect. And they had to do a lot of public hearings in Hartford, East Hartford, Weathersfield, and, um, and listen to the feedback and then come back with a plan and stuff like that. I think all of that has transpired. And I believe that everything was a courtesy to the towns because the FAA oversees this. And if they consider it a safety hazard, they trump everybody. And you just can't, you can't change that. But I don't know, it may still be, the groups may obviously still be going on. I see Suzanne nodding. Do you know a little more about it? I don't, yeah. I mean, my impression was from the meetings that they had that the people who wanted to cut the trees down didn't actually care what anyone from town said that they were going to do it anyway. Um, even though the trees that they're cutting down are in illegal flight path. They're not supposed to be going over those trees anyway, but whatever. Um, but I got the impression that they didn't really care what town members had to say and they were going to cut the trees down anyway. Um, and I don't know if, I don't think there was any other recourse that the town could have from what my understanding of it was, which is unfortunate. There is a Brainerd Airport Advisory Committee. And that's made up of residents in Weathersfield and Glastonbury, I believe. And the manager meets with them every couple of months. And I know it does come up on their agenda. Um, but I know people have started talking about it again, Colleen. So it must mean that they've probably said something about, yeah, the project will be in 2021 or something. But I don't know that for a fact. I could get more info for you at least find out um, where, where, it, where what the status is today. Yeah, I, th I think that would be interesting to, to learn. Thank you. All right. Um, Solomon Wells Health, are we renting it yet or anything going on with it or? It's still closed, but we're, we're looking at that now to see how many people we could fit in with the social distancing guidelines. So we're going through that process. We're purchasing the cleaning supplies. 
we're looking to see if we can let small groups in there, but I'm not sure how, how small the group will need to be based on the size of the room, but we're working with the caretaker there and trying to figure out, can we also use the parlor and kind of count that and see how we could do it? Mm -hmm. And also see if it's family gatherings and can a family, you know, come together, those kinds of things. So we're looking at that. Are there any more uh, renovations or anything else going on there? Or? Not, not, no, because we didn't get funded in capital improvements. Okay. The next step was to do the out exterior repair of all the wood. All right. Okay. Um, but the farmer's market's still going on. Yeah, yeah. My wife and my son go down every Thursday. And I hear they get good crowds. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, uh, the Keisha Farm Committee update. What is going on is that uh, the town council really hasn't funded anything any, for a plan. So um, Gary, the town manager, went out and got a hold of the University of Hartford and hopefully that uh, we'll have some students working on some of the plan and we'll see what they can come up with for us. So um, I, I didn't even read through the uh, documentation. I did get it, but I didn't get a chance to read through it for our next meeting. Um, hopefully they can do most of what we had asked for. I'm not sure that they can, but we'll find out. Um, the other thing is I had asked Kathy for a uh, for some contacts with the um, Boy Scouts because uh, depending on what uh, they come up with, we're obviously looking for uh, people that want to volunteer to do things and uh, raise money. If there's an Eagle Scout project, that, that can be done or, or anything to that effect. Um, you know, we'd certainly go along with that. There was also a tour this past Thursday and a lot of it had to do with the barns and whether we can get the barn um, designated as like a historical site because if it if we can then we can probably get some money from from the state and other grants and, and things like that to maybe restore it but that this is just beginning so uh you know we're certainly looking for ways to raise money without asking the town for the money and then uh, the problem is we don't have a comprehensive plan so when you come to mill woods you come to the um the cove in that area there's always a comprehensive plan. So if somebody comes to Kathy, Kathy can say, well, this area is slotted for this, or this area is slotted for that, but this area is free. You can do it in this area. We don't have that yet. So if anybody comes to us with anything, we don't really know anything. We don't know if there's wetlands there we can't touch. We don't really know uh, the traffic flow patterns and how it would affect the neighborhood. We don't know any of that. So. Uh, you know, it's very important to get the plan in place first, and then we can kind of work off of that. So, uh, we'll, uh, that's kind of where it is right now. It's kind of in the, up in the air. Dan is, Dan, is the town hoping that the U Hart students can give us that information, or is that something that needs to come from a formal consulting company that the town's not going to pay for right now? Um, I'll have to read the uh, proposal. One of the, the person charged is, uh, I don't know if you guys know Brooke Penders. But uh, Brooke is working with Gary. And then they did send something. I have not read through it yet. But I certainly brought it up at the last meeting. You know, one of the important parts is the traffic study. Because the last thing you want to do is get tons of traffic and ruin the neighborhood. So, you know, how do we do this in a constructive way, whatever we put in there, um, that, you know, enhances the neighborhood? So, uh, as soon as I know something, I will report to you guys. But right now, I don't know anything. It's kind of, you know, we're trying to figure out how do we how do we get started with this without any funding. This is kind of what we're doing. Dan, was there any environmental cleanup that needed to be done, or is that that's part of nobody has funding? So there's some environmental issues on that site. Is that correct? There, there may be. I don't know that there are. Uh, there may be. Um, we're not sure what's in and around that. Um, farm. There's a, also a house, I think, one or two houses there. And uh, so I don't know that there is, I don't know if there's oil tanks or anything else. I, I, I don't really know one way or another. But uh, 
certainly one of the um, ideas that came up is, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but there's almost like greenhouses back there where the, and there's, uh, there's a term for them and it's for seedlings. They're not called greenhouses, but uh, I think the committee was looking into getting um, pricing and how much it would cost. And maybe if there's an Eagle Scout, you could fit in a project. Uh, they could do that and, and fix all of those up. There. I think there's two of them back there. But it, you know, that's kind of where we're starting on these things. How do we get the ball rolling without any money? It's kind of difficult. Because I, I thought I understood originally that there had to be some environmental assessment done before I mean, it was contingent on purchasing the property. So I'm kind of, I, I assume something was done because otherwise you kind of bought a pig in a pulp if there's, you know, if somebody hasn't done their due diligence checking for environmental issues. Yeah, so I, 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 don't, I don't know if I don't Kathy know. knows. Yeah, Mike, they did, they had to do a lot of that prior to buying the property. So a lot of the environmental stuff was tested and everything. So, so before they signed off on anything, um, everything that they did, I forget, they, they had names for the different phases that they went through. And it seemed pretty involved in what they did. I, I left the manager's office before it all finished, but a lot of things were in the works. So there wasn't going to be a sign off or a payment until it was all checked. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, the, um, the barn, I had a tour of the barn uh, a while ago, and it's an old dairy barn. It's, it's actually kind of fascinating because the floor isn't flat. It's got places where the cows actually stood. So if it's, it is not flat at all. So if you were to make anything out of it, you'd figure, you have to figure out a way how to more or less level the floor. Um, there obviously isn't an elevator in it. There's a giant, giant upstairs to it. Um, but as far as restoring it or anything, we don't have prices or anything else either. It's, uh, there's a lot of work, you know, pre-work that we were hoping would be done through the, uh, uh, through the consultant. So we'll see how this goes. I did drive by it and it's all cleaned up. You could really see the barn nicely now. Yeah, they, oh, they cut everything? There's, yeah, it's, some type of it's some type of invasive weed. To the only way they really get rid of it is you actually have to dig it out. It's it's really bad, so you can cut it, but it doesn't really go away. It, you gotta like so we'll see how things go with it. What happens? Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not an ideal situation. I'll put it to you that way. All right, so that's the farm. As soon as I know something, I think there's another meeting the first week of October, so I should know a little bit more, and then I'll update everybody. Um, all right, uh, board member comments. Nothing? All right. Harbor Management Commission, uh, I don't see any Harbor Masters present. Yeah, Lydia. Mike wasn't able, they, he wasn't able to make it tonight, but uh, I did send out his report today. I don't know if you all had a chance to see it. Yeah, yeah Kath, the, the question I guess I have is, um, He's got the 25 moorings and 13 tenders. You don't happen to know, and I should know, and maybe Tom remembers how many moorings we have. So the 25 out of how many total do we have there? Is it like 75 or 80 or something? I, oh, I, I, I thought it was 80 or 85, or unless it was 60 or 65, but it I'm was thinking, over 50. I'm thinking 60, but I could double check. <laughs> no, I was just curious how that compared the 25 moorings this year, what we normally. Well, it's a little more than last year. Okay. 21 or 22, I think, last year. Yeah. Okay. And the um, he's got the channel clearing. It says a uh, couple of trees along the bank. Maybe the town can grab them. I don't know if a worker request have been put in for that or he just made a note. If he makes a note on this, I assume somebody's requested Public Works to maybe take care of that. Otherwise, it won't get done. They went in last weekend to clean up a lot of the cove. I have to check and see if they got that far. Okay. Because I, I got the report after they did the cleanup. So I have to check in with them to see if they were, if they, I know they were trying to get all the way down around the, uh, the bend out to the road to the river. So I'm just not sure how far they got. And the final comment, the, um, I hate to bring up the boat again, because I thought we got over that when we got the newer boat, but it seems like this one spent much more time out of the water than 
it showed up this year and it looks like it, does it still need to be repaired or did it get done? Uh, we're way, we're working, we're getting a, um, we have someone looking at it now that's going to give us a quote on what's going on with the motor. Okay, because it'll and be ready to take to out, it'll be ready to take out of the water anyway, so. Yeah, I, I know. Um, it, it, it just kept having issues this summer, so that's, yeah, we're bringing it, we've brought it somewhere, they're looking at it, they're going to get back to us, and then we're going to have to evaluate the age of the motor what the cost is for repair and see which way we want to go. Do you, is that something you kind of stay on top of or once it gets in physical services hands? I mean, I, That's I think all I, us. I would, I would only echo that I think it's important that somehow you stay on top of it, I guess, because I think this is how things sometimes get kind of slipped away and don't get followed up on. So I, I think I would look to you to make sure that stuff gets done. Yeah, no, I have um, Rachel from my staff is actually in contact with the repair place. Okay, good. Yeah, we're, Thank you. We're, we're spearheading it and we're going to be talking with the Harbor Masters to get their input. And as soon as we hear from the, the boating company, the repair place, um, then we'll talk with them and make some determinations. I found out that the motors are 1999. So what, year's to, the, what year's the boat? Oh, I don't know. I didn't I ask remember. that question. No, no, no. I didn't know if that the motor was newer than the boat or vice versa. I can check. I, I just don't happen to know that. We were just talking about the boat, the motor, and the, that, that the age of it came up. So just to determine whether or not do you put money into it or do you, do you go and do something else. So that's what we're going to be looking at. Okay. I'm with you, Mike. I just want to get it fixed so they could use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Geez, we went just went through this. <laughs> you know. We just have no luck uh, with uh, boats. Yeah. All right. Um, anything else? Any other board member comments or anything? I to adjourn. Post oh, beat me to it. I was going to make a motion to adjourn, but um, I don't know if that mic chimed in and beat me to it. All right. You can second, you can second it, Tom. Oh, okay. I'll second it. All right. All in, favor. Yeah. All in favor. Aye. All in favor. Aye. All right. We'll see you guys next month. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good one. Bye-bye. See you from a distance. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>